My first no-no is... Never ask, can I help you? Because subconsciously, if you need help, you're in trouble. You're in distress. So I don't use the word help. To substitute a word for that, you can use assist. Or serve, because we are here to serve folks. We serve the community. Now, you never Wear sunglasses while you're talking to your customers. You never have them on. Don't be talking on your cell phone, texting anybody, anything like that. I got to tell everybody that yesterday. That's very rude. Okay? You get a phone call, ignore it. Unless they're getting ready to come pick you up, put cuffs on you or whatever for a warrant or something, ignore the phone call. Okay? Now, Always lower or raise yourself to the customer's level. If they shake your hand real firm, you shake their hand real firm. If they give you the dead fish, you give them the dead fish back. Because if you squeeze it too hard, you're coming across as high pressure. You're already invading their space. Yes. So, um, and also, always keep eye contact. Don't look away. Men, don't keep your hand, don't put your hands in your pockets. Don't have your fists balled up either. That's negative. Okay? That can get confrontational. All right, obviously everyone knows to not fold your arms, okay? If a customer does that, they're in closed thinking mode. They're not listening to the words you're saying. They're going down the wrong path. Did anybody watch any of the um, uh, YouTube videos last night about uh, body language during negotiating on YouTube? Hey. Do yourself a favor, look it up. There's a lot of things that you never realize that, that people do, okay? Um, we, um, we don't pounce on a customer. We stay six to eight foot away from a customer at all times. So after you shake your hand, you back back up six foot at least. Okay? We're not going to get in their space. We are going to always welcome the customer to the dealership. You make sure you get that in your greeting. You welcome them. You don't assume. And you always give them your first and last name. And you always get theirs in return. And you never address them unless you ask them how they prefer to be addressed. You never address them by their first name. It's a matter of respect and it's a matter of psychology because once they tell you, well, you can call me Ron, then when I implant you into the subconscious for that first impression, I'm kind of, to use an analogy, I'm putting you in my friends and family circle. Okay? Not that car salesman lying circle. Okay? Now, Anything I missed, y'all? Um, On the first step, anything I missed? I'm oh, and we do always ask if they're here for the big sale. Now, have you heard about the big sale or we're having a big sale? But have you heard, I mean, are you here for the big sale? Okay? That we're asking that, right? we're, We asked the customer that when we meet and greet them, like we did yesterday. Are you here for the big sale? Okay. I always try to get in, and this is after obviously you shake your hand and stuff, get in the fact that, gee, Mr. Customer, I'm brand new, but if you have any questions I can't answer, I'll find out the answers for you because I'm your salesperson. So I'll be your salesperson. Okay? That should be about it on step one so far, right? Yeah. All right, step two. Step two, we're going to go into that here in a little bit after we role play some of the new folks. Step two is called qualifying slash finding the piece of the puzzle. Some people call it investigation. Investigating, but I just call it finding the piece of the puzzle. And we'll go over today what the pieces of the puzzle are. Okay? Now, on step two, before we even start asking any of the pieces of the puzzle, you always ask this. Now, so everyone understands, we're going to go from step one, we're going to transition at a certain point, which I'll show you later today, where we get them inside. So when we're doing step two, we've got them sitting down at the desk. Okay? From outside to inside. 
sitting down on their seat, not their feet. All right? So you're going to ask them this question when you have them sitting down. Mr. Customer, is there anything other than figures or terms keeping you from taking delivery of a car right now? In other words, we're trying to find out that we have all the decision makers right in front of us. Okay? And then it's not, he's got to wait three months until his back brother straightens up. Okay? So we want to make sure we don't waste his time and vice versa ours or vice versa our managers. Okay? Now, if in that case that he says, well, no, no, I got to talk to my wife, then this is where you automatically jump into step two and a half, which is touch the desk. That's go talk to your manager because you use, you jump into step two and a half if you haven't got the piece of the puzzle or you haven't even got to that point yet because the customer has an objection why they can't do business today. Okay? You're going to go tell your manager, look, this guy says his wife has to be part of the decision making. As a, you know, so I'm going, to, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to, as a manager, I'm going to say, well, look, let's see if we can go, maybe if we possibly we take the car to show the wife, because I understand, I don't want him in the doghouse, you know. Um, or if maybe we could have him drive the car home tonight and then bring it back tomorrow at his convenience and write everything up subject, subject to his wife's approval. So there's many things that we can do, you know, to, to uh, avoid, to, to make sure we get a car sale. Because every customer that hits a lot buys a car within 72 hours, and they normally visit 1.2 dealerships, okay? So if you don't sell them a car when they're first here, what do you think the chances are you're going to see them come back? Not very good. I mean, some do, but I'm not saying they don't. You better have some great, sprinkle some real good D-back dust on them, though. That's some powerful stuff, okay? What we call it, the D-back bus. Bus is waiting outside. Yeah. It's along with the up bus. Don't wait on the up bus. We're going to generate our own customers, too. All right? Now, so, once you've gotten the piece of the puzzle, say everything's fine, and no, you know, I, you know, I'll take delivery today if, you, if my terms are agreeable and stuff, yeah. So we're going to get the pieces of the puzzle, but I'll go on that after we do the first step. I'll tell you all the pieces of the puzzle for step two, okay? So once you get all that, you're going to go up to the desk, to the manager, and you're going to say, here's what I got, da 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 And he's going to say, okay, yep, right, we're close. Go show them, stock number such and such. So step three is product presentation slash walk around. Everybody got that? Now, this is where you have to exceed the, by showing the, all the features and the benefits of the car, you have to exceed, you have to have value exceed price. Because if you don't justify why the price of the car, you need to get them involved and show every little feature on the car. Okay? So what our point is, is because in step three, we're selling the product. Step one, you're selling yourself, but you're still going to be selling yourself all the way through too, right? Remember that? Okay. But on step three, you're selling that product. So don't be selling price. So it should never be about price. So it's up to you to give a world-renowned product presentation and a world-renowned walk-around on that car with excitement and enthusiasm, getting them involved, showing them all the toys and features and playing with them all, okay? To where, like I painted the picture for you all on the lady going down the road in the deal, where I painted that picture. That's when you're painting that picture. Because I painted a picture for most of you yesterday on what you thought, you know, and everybody was different, but that's the picture that I painted for you in your mind. Okay, so we're going to paint that picture so we can justify, so we can make value exceed price. Okay, price should never come into it. 85% of customers that come in the door, first of all, are payment buyers. Okay, most of them don't care what they're paying for the car, but still, they want to build value for what they're getting for that payment. Okay, so, you know, I don't want, you know, price should never come into it, but you need to build value and justify what they're getting for that payment you're going to end up selling them on later. Okay? Question? Yeah. yeah um, when you do that, uh, if they bring up, say, what's the wiggle room on the price, 
I'll show you wiggle room. Yeah. Wiggle, right? wiggle, walk. Right? Wiggle, wiggle, walk. Listen, listen. Oh. When I, because I went into car dealerships whenever I was, you know, looking for a car or whatever, uh -huh. and they told me, they're like, well, there is absolutely no wiggle room unless you're paying cash. Yeah, well, first of all, so, you're not going to fender trade. Fender trading is, is first of all, you're brand new. Uh -huh. So they shouldn't, they know they can't ask you because you don't know. Okay. Okay. And whenever you get a customer that starts asking, because we can go through a million hypotheticals. Trust me. Yeah. I mean, I, there's new ones every day that I've never heard. I guarantee you. But is, so, that, is that a true statement, though? I mean, that, that's basically what my question is. Do is 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 the price workable if they're paying? It's always workable if the terms are fair. If the figures are agreeable, that's what okay. that means. Okay. That means it's workable. Wow. You know, if I if I'm saying if, if the figures are agreeable, if we get the figures agreeable to you, in other words, then that means we're willing to work with you. Okay, okay. and I'm on your side. Okay, so, so that's what we're here to course. Huh? So the answer is of course. Of course. Okay. That, this so is the only negotiating cash. business left. <laughs> you know, the only time someone's going to tell you, oh, you know, you pay cash. You know, first of all, it used to be back in the old days that cash was king. You know, well, cash is still king to get a deal done if they got bad credit. But back in the old days, the more money you got down, you get an extra spiff, and they give you extra money in your pocket for doing that. But nowadays, we'd rather in finance. We don't want to pay cash. Yeah. Okay. We want our customers finance. Interest. Yeah, we get money on the back. Plus, a lot of you get paid on if they finance, they buy a warning, stuff like that. That's extra money above on your, uh, that you get above and beyond your commission. Okay? All right. Now, so once you've done your product presentation slash walk around, what is our next step? Demonstration. Demonstration. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Huh? Is that 3.5 or 4? That's four. Okay. There's not. A, there's only a two point five and a four point five. Okay. There's only two half steps, and that's on number two and number four. All right. So on the demo ride, who drives the car off the lot? Shay. I do. Thank you. Salesperson drives the car off the lot. And see, I've never had that happen. Not all the times I bought a car, they were like, hey, "Give me the keys," and I just go out. Like. And we'll ex some of y'all hopefully at, at, at different breaks and stuff you'll explain some of the stuff that I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to miss. I can't go over every everything I did yesterday. All right, but to some of these folks. But bottom line is, how many times have you got in somebody's car and you're not used to driving? You hit the brakes and it's like this, or you hit the gas pedal and it jerks, whatever, because you're not used to driving, right? Okay. Well, we don't want anything that throws up a red flag on the subconscious part of the person's brain, because that's what drives us to do everything that we do. Okay, we went over subliminal messaging and everything yesterday, so I might go over it again today just to touch base so you understand what I'm saying about how the subconscious part of our brain drives everything that we do. Um, but anyway, so if you drive it off a lot and it drives perfect, okay, and you pull over, let them drive, and all of a sudden they hit the brakes and it jerks, or they hit the gas and it jerks, they're gonna, a red flag will start to go up, then it'll, then it'll, go, it'll, it'll say, well, they drove perfect when he did it, boom, and it starts to go right back down. But if they drive it first and it does that, it's too late. And you don't, you know, they haven't seen you drive it, but it's too late. That red flag going up, you can't just go in there and reach in their skull and yank it down. Okay? It's too late. Yes? Uh, I was just basically like when you test drive a car with somebody, that, it, it, would that maybe your first time getting in that car too? So you might, yeah. you know? No. Okay, just check. It shouldn't be. Yeah.